Math Model Second Semester 2011 ACP Review Objective 2 Creating and Using Linear, Quadratic, and Exponential Models This lesson covers the basic concept of taking data and will mostly be looking at numeric data in table form. Then we'll choose a model or equation that best fits the data and for this lesson we'll use a graphing calculator to analyze that data. And finally we'll use that model to interpret the relation and make predictions based on the model that best fits the data. During this class, we spent quite a bit of time using data to analyze linear, quadratic, and even exponential relations. But for the purposes of this lesson, we'll concentrate on solving the problems with the calculator. Problem 1. For the table below, choose the type of relation that best fits the data. To analyze the data and answer the question, first press the STAT key on the calculator just under the DELETE key. Press ENTER to choose EDIT. Enter all the X values under L1 then enter all the Y values into the L2 column. We need to first take a good look at the points. Press the Y equals key at the upper left of the keypad. From here, go to the plot 1 and press enter so it's highlighted. Then, press the zoom key at the center of the top row of the function keys. Scroll down to 9, zoom stat. Press enter. Here we see the five points on the graph. Does it look like it's linear? Of course not. Therefore, we're going to try something else. Press STAT again. Arrow once to the right to the CALC submenu. First, we're going to try the quadratic regression. Arrow down to 5, quadratic regression. Press ENTER. Press ENTER again. An R squared value close to 1, like, like this one of 0.99, means close to a perfect fit. We go to Y equals and enter the equation. It's 3.428, etc., X squared, minus 2.9, etc., X, plus 3.86, etc. Press Graph. While this looks pretty good, it doesn't match these two points very well. While it could be our best answer, we'll go back to try something else. Press STAT, arrow once to the right to the CALC submenu, arrow down to zero, exponential regression. Press ENTER. Press ENTER again. These numbers mean 3 times 2 to the power of X and R squared is 1, meaning a perfect fit. So we now know enough to pick C as our correct answer, but let's graph to take a better look. Press graph. This seems a better fit than the quadratic equation we tried earlier. Problem 2. For the data set 0, 0,3, 1, 1, 2, negative 1, and 3, negative 3, which function best fits the points? We're given four points and four functions or equations as answer choices. The first thing I would do is plot the points using the calculator. Press STAT, press ENTER. Next we enter all the points, the X values under L1 and the Y values under L2. From here go to the function editor by pressing the Y equals key. We see that plot 1 is turned on. If not, we activate it by going up to it and pressing ENTER. Next press the zoom key, scroll down to 9, zoom STAT, press ENTER. We see all the four points here. It looks like it's linear. We could go to the function editor in y equals and enter each equation, but we'll try the regression feature. Press the SAT key, arrow once to the right to the calc sub menu, arrow down to four, linear regression. Press enter. Press enter again. We have y equals negative two x plus three, and we see that that equation in answer b so we can circle our correct answer, b. We can also go to y equals and place our equation here, y equals negative 2x plus 3. Then press graph. I like doing this to be absolutely sure the function hits all the plotted points. Problem 3. The city of Glen Oaks, Texas is projected to grow at a constant percentage increase each year. The table shows the population for years 2009 through 2011. At the same percentage growth rate, partic the city's population in 2013. This is, in my opinion, a pretty tough problem. These words, percentage growth rate, mean that it's an exponential relation. We go to our graphing calculator and press STAT, then ENTER. For the first three years, 2009, 2010, and 2011, we can enter 0, 1, and 2. It just makes it easier. And next, under L2, we enter the population values for each year. From here, we can go to zoom 9 and look at the points. This is what we see, and it looks pretty much like a line. 
but since it's percentage growth, we'll go and create an exponential regression by going to stat, and then calc, scroll down to exponential regression, number zero, press enter, press enter again. We get a starting point of about 35,621, and we get a base of 1.015, which is an increased rate of 1.5%. So we go to the function editor with the y equals key. We enter the exponential function 35,621 times 1.015 to the power of x. Press graph. We see a very nice fit through the points. We can go to the table view by pressing second, then graph. We see the first three years matching perfectly 2009, 2010, and 2011. So 2013 is going to be this year, year four and we find that answer here in answer C. And we circle our correct answer C. If you happen to have used a linear regression, you would have chosen answer A instead of C, which would be still pretty close, but not the best answer. Problem four, in throwing a rock off a cliff, the rock falls 16 feet after one second and is 64 feet down after two seconds. How far from the top of the cliff should the rock be after four seconds? We press STAT ENTER to put in our points. At the top of the cliff, the location of the rock elevation compared to time is 0 at time 0. So we place 0 into both L1 and L2 columns. For the next point, we have the rock 16 feet down after 1 second, so the point goes in as 1 and negative 16. And for our last available point, we have the rock 64 feet down after two seconds. Let's go to take a look at our plot of points. Go to zoom, scroll down to nine, zoom stat, press enter. We see the points taking this path, definitely not a line. We go to the regression menu by going to stat, calc. If it's not linear, so we'll go down to five, quadratic regression. Press enter, press enter again. Our function is y equals negative 16x squared. We go to the function editor and y equals and enter y equals negative 16x squared. Press graph. We see that it matches all three points. Now we'll go to the table view by pressing second then the graph key. At four seconds we see negative 256 feet and this is where we see a drop of 256 feet. So we circle our correct answer A. Problem five, the table below shows the amounts of an element remaining given years of radioactive decay. At about what year is there 50% of the original sample remaining? To analyze the problem, we'll plot the points. Go to stat, then press enter. Enter the independent values, the years, under L1. Then enter the dependent values, the amounts, under L2. From here, we'll look at the points by pressing zoom, and scroll down to nine. Zoom stat, press enter. We see the points. The points are not in a line, but a curve. We'll go to run a regression by going to stat, then calc. We'll scroll down to the option zero, exponential regression. How do we know it's exponential? Radioactive decay is an exponential function. Press enter. Press enter again. We have about 60.2 times 0.94354 to the power of x. You could write this down, then go to enter the equation in the function editor, but we'll go over a calculator technique to make it easier. Go to the function editor by pressing the Y equals key, then press the VARS key between the program and clear keys, arrow down to five, statistics, press enter. Arrow twice to the right to the equation submenu, press enter. The equation is pasted into the function editor, press graph. We see the function fitting the points nicely. We go to the table view by pressing second, then graph. We're looking for half of this initial amount, 60 ounces, and that will be 30 ounces. We scroll down, and this is where we see about 30 ounces at 12 years. And this is where we find 12 years in the answer choices. So we circle our correct answer, C. Problem six, Joe is saving money to buy a motorcycle. If his savings amounts continue according to the trend in the table, after what month 
will he have saved at least $1,200? The first thing we'll do is go to enter our points. We go to stat enter, enter the months and savings here in columns under L1 and L2. Next, we'll take a look at the points. We'll go to zoom, scroll down to option 9, zoom stat, press enter. We see the points in a line indicating a linear relation. We're prepared we prepare to run a regression by going to stat, then calc. We arrow down to four, linear regression. Press enter. Press enter again. Our function is y equals 80x plus 100. We go to the function editor by pressing y equals and enter the function y equals 80x plus 100. We press graph. We see the line fitting the points very nicely. We go to check the numbers by pressing second, then graph to get to the table view. We scroll down to the x value where y sub 1 is at least $1,200. And we see it here where at month 14 there is $1,220 saved. This is where we find 14 months, so we circle our correct answer, C. One thing that you may have noticed is the r squared and r values after the regressions. Here's how to activate that feature. Press second, then the zero key at the bottom of the keypad to get the catalog menu. Get to the letter D by pressing the X to the negative one key on the left side of the keypad. Scroll down to diagnostic on and off. By pressing enter while here is how to turn the diagnostic tool on and off to help evaluate the fitting of the regression with the R squared values. This has been Math Model Second Semester 2011 ACP Review Objective 2, Creating and Using Quadratic and Exponential Models. Thanks for viewing.